and welcome to our Christmas Eve candlelight communion service. It's a joy having you here this evening on this holy eve in our night's theme of the light of Christmas with our songs of praise for our Redeemer's birth. If you're visiting with us for the first time this evening, we extend a special welcome to each and every one of you. As we look around our beautifully decorated worship center, I want you to think about the moment over 2,000 years ago when mankind received the gift that they were not expecting. God came as man. He came to earth in a humble stable in a manger, born a humble baby boy, seen only by a few people, his parents, some shepherds, and the three magi. Howard Thurman was a great Amer African-American author. He was also a philosopher, theologian, and educator. Listen to these words that he wrote about Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among everyone, to make music in the heart. What a wonderful description of the continuing meaning, spirit, and work of Christmas. This work and witness of Christmas belongs to all of us. They reflect the love of God, I'm sure of that, and they can remake and renew the world around us. They can restore and remake our own lives and relationships. And so we wait expectantly for his second coming, having been given a glimpse of what to expect and the sense of urgency to prepare ourselves for his return and our eternal reward with him in heaven. Now that will be a Christmas gift. Let's have a word of prayer. Most gracious, loving Father, May the remembrance of this holy night of our dear Savior's birth be a time for us to slow down, think deep, and reconsider the meaning of the gift of Jesus Christ as the reason for the season. Open the door of our hearts and minds, Lord, to the reality of you as revealed in the life of Jesus, who through his work of loving compassion, healing, encouraging, and praying continually for those men and women who were hurting, we, the Christian church, have been blessed to have been given the privilege to carry out that work in the world in the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of God, the Holy Spirit. With deep gratitude and joy, let's be mindful that love shows up in the most surprising of places, in the most human of ways. We are to serve in love. This journey begins in our hearts and travels out through our hands and feet, out in the way we live. Our thoughts and prayers are for those in our church and community that we'll be able to reach out to them who are suffering, encourage them to persevere and have hope in you. We pray that we will be loving and compassionate instruments of your divine grace according to your plan for us and for all men and women everywhere who need to be in a loving, eternal relationship with you. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
750 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah said, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. An angel came to Mary and told her she would be the mother of God's child. He told her, don't be afraid for all things are possible with God. An angel also spoke with Joseph, telling him not to be afraid and to go ahead with his marriage to Mary, even though she was going to have a baby. She will have a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone shone. A, a, shone round about them and they were sure and the sure afraid and the angel said unto them be fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior which is christ the lord and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a, mul a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, God, peace good will be will toward men. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerus Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and to have come to worship him. light of Christmas. Stand as we sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart be buried in blue. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. 
Thank you so much, Meredith and Rebecca. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. And tonight we are celebrating the birth of Jesus, who came as and remains the light of the world. There's a lot of darkness around us, isn't there? A lot of things going on that we don't quite understand, a lot of people who are hurting. I couldn't help but think as I was listening to the ladies as they were playing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and then as we were singing together uh, of joy to the world and the various Christmas uh, carols and the kids and the scripture readings that they were saying. Here we sit tonight. No doubt all of you have had a hectic week, maybe a hectic month, who knows? Maybe a whole hectic year. Well, the good news is you only have a few more days and the year's over and you can start all over again. I love the opportunity of coming together the night before Christmas. When I was a kid, Christmas Eve was a huge night as our our family got together and I come from a very large family and it was very unique. But so when I think about having a Christmas Eve service, we didn't go to a Christmas Eve service when I was a kid. But I always think about, am I infringing on people's time and purpose? And, but there's something unique about this. You can come in and sit down, and you're tired, and you're weary, and if you fall asleep, nobody notices. <laughs> but there's something about the lights, the music, the quietness, that we can just maybe, of all of the things that we've been doing the past few days, and just quiet our spirit and focus on why we celebrate Christmas. And I want to talk for a few minutes about this light of Christmas. But another thing that went through my mind as the ladies were playing, how blessed you and I are that we are able to come and be here tonight. You are blessed. You say, well, I'm only there because somebody drugged me. No, you are blessed because... You have the health to get in a car and come and walk in the building. Of all of the things that you have gone through and experienced this past year, some good, maybe some not so good, but here you are that there is, we have an opportunity to focus upon the one who brings us hope. There are people who would be here if they could, but they're unable to, and I want to have prayer for a a few special people. I think of Mary Creasy, who is in Florida, and she is ill, and her blood counts are not very high, and which prohibits her from going out to be in crowds. She would be unable to attend a service like this. I think of a young lady that she and her husband used to attend our church, and they've moved away, been gone for several years, but It's going to be a really different Christmas for this young couple, Scott and Easter Limbeck. As Easter has kidney failure, she's on two lists, waiting, praying, hoping that she could have a donor. This Monday, she will begin dialysis. I say that to remind you how blessed you are. If you don't think you are, think of somebody else that is unable to do the things that you are able to do. And then I would be remiss if I didn't mention our men and women in military that are out, many of them in dangerous places tonight, protecting our freedom and our rights that we can come and do the very thing that we are doing tonight. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, We pray for these individuals that I have mentioned, and no doubt there are many, many more. I also would think of that individual that this is the very first Christmas that they have to go through without a loved one. In this last year, someone lost a husband. They lost a wife. Some lost a child. Some lost a mom or a dad. Some experienced some really heartbreaking news as a family that was once strong and intact became divided and that brings hurt and sorrow and pain. Father, we could just go on with all of the various things that have happened that 
whether it's an illness or a loss of job or whatever it might be. But we do pray for your blessings upon all of these people during this special time of year, and we also would pray for our armed services, for every branch. I pray for our police department. I pray for our firefighters. I pray for our doctors and nurses, those who protect us, those who have given of their lives and help to keep us well and protect us. So God, we just want to thank you for the privilege that we have that we can focus for a moment upon others that are less fortunate than us and ask for your blessing upon them during this very special time. In your name we pray, amen. Wherever you've driven the past few days or the past few weeks, whether it's going by a store, walking in a store, driving by someone's home or even your own home, and in some cases, complete subdivisions, everywhere you go, it seems like things are lit up with Christmas lights. Lights truly add to the festive nature of Christmas. But I was wondering, could you imagine what it would be like before electricity? Could you imagine what life would have been like without any light whatsoever, except maybe of a fire, whatever it would come from that? And of course, you had the sun through the day and the daylight, but, but, but other than that, I think wonder and awe must have filled everyone's mind the first time the first light bulb lit up. But electricity bringing forth light, do you realize that was not the first time that light changed the world? In fact, light changed the world in the very, very beginning of time. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that this was good, and he separated the light from darkness, and he called the light day and the dark night. When you think of Christmas, we think of children opening gifts near the Christmas tree. Their eyes bugged open as they looked with wonder at their gift. And then when they unwrapped just what they had hoped that they would get, how excited and, and, and again that sense of wonderment and, and awe as they looked. But there came a light, brighter than electricity could provide, and even though there was wonder and awe at that time, and even though that there was wonder and awe, and still is, and I hope that is the tr true of all of your children tomorrow, or maybe tonight, whenever you celebrate Christmas, that they have that wonder and awe about them. But there is a wonder and an awe when we think that it was Jesus, God's Son, who came in, to a world of darkness. And the light that he brought brings forth hope for all of humanity. This was called Jesus. He was called the Messiah, the Savior. He is recognized as the light of the world. But let's think for a few minutes about the light and wonder of Christmas. What is the Christmas story without Mary and Joseph? What courage they displayed as they faced obstacles after obstacle after obstacle upon learning from an angel that they would be the mother and the stepfather of Jesus. But Mary and Joseph let God's light shine into their hearts. I want you to think with me as we just ponder that for a bit. An angel came to Mary and spoke to her and said that she would be the mother of God's son. You've heard the story, many of you, that she didn't understand. She was afraid, and the angel assured her and said, do not be afraid. And she said, but how could this be? I haven't been with a man. But the angel told her good words for you and me on December 24th, 2015. Nothing is impossible for God. An angel came and spoke to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, it's okay. Go ahead and marry your fiancé. 
you will become the stepfather of Jesus. Somehow, some way, think with me about the very beginning, the light of time, the light of Christ came into the hearts of these two people. Again, as Mary and Joseph let God's light shine into their hearts and lives, they found a new faith. They found a new strength. They found a new courage. They found a trust within them to step forward and to do what God wanted them to do, no matter how uncertain the way ahead seemed. Well, that's Mary and Joseph, but the shepherds, the surprised shepherds, the shepherds are in the Christmas story. The shepherds are that group of people that, meanwhile, in another part of Judea. I mean, they were just out there watching sheep. Could you imagine what, how your night would be if you had to watch sheep sleep? Say that six times. But the shepherds, here they are. They, they, now listen, you talk about darkness. They clearly were in the dark. They were somewhere in a field watching sheep. The dark didn't bother them. They were used to it. I suppose that they really enjoyed and thought it was a special night any time that there would be a, a quarter moon or a half moon. or Wow, they must have thought it was spectacular. By the way, being a shepherd in that day out on the Judean hills and there's no lights whatever, they must have had some awesome sights. Wouldn't you think as they looked at the stars twinkling like they had been thrown against black velvet. But nothing prepared the shepherds for a visit one night from an angel. Can you imagine? I, I, I don't know. An angel glowing in the sky? What would that look like? Did the angel glow? As he, as he began telling the good news to the shepherds, a whole crowd of angels. One translation says, armies of angels showed up praising God. And there's reason to believe that the angels were probably singing. The Bible says in Luke, they were terrified. Do you think? They, <laughs> they were taken by surprise. This was a totally, totally unexpected event. And then in Luke chapter 2, verse 15, it says, After the angels left them and went into heaven, the shepherds looked at one another and they said, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. You know what's interesting about that? They were out in the fields watching sheep. All of a sudden, there was something more important than sheep. They left. They said, we have heard of the voice of God. We have heard. We've been informed. We have gotten an announcement. A baby has been born. He's the Savior of the world. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go and see what the Lord has been telling us about. Well, that's the shepherds. Then there's the trusting magi. The magi were men in the east. Now, these people were very, very intelligent. They regularly watched and studied the significance of of twinkling lights at night in a dark sky. The Magi even knew that when they saw a star, they knew the significance of it, evidently. Because they asked this question, they said, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star, and we have come to worship him. They followed the light from a star, now, it is interesting. For the Magi, they faced darkness of another kind. You see, they thought if the Savior has been born, everyone would be happy. Everyone would be excited. And then they run into King Herod. And Herod wasn't so happy. In fact, Herod said, Basically, conversation, my translation. What are you doing? We're going to go. We're going to go to bed. We're following that star. We're going to go find the Christ child. He said, hey, when you find him, come back and tell me where he is because I, too, want to worship him. Herod didn't want to worship him. Herod wanted to kill him. 
And somehow between Herod and finding Jesus, that translated into the hearts and the minds of the shepherds and to the hearts and the minds of the Magi. And they did not return. The Magi did not go back to King Herod. They went a different direction. Remember this. When God sets a plan in motion, it's carried out in the most finest of details. If it takes a miracle to fulfill that plan, so be it. What was good back then is good for today. If nothing was impossible for God back then, nothing is impossible for God today. Some of you folks are here tonight and you've been thinking and praying for individuals and, and, and uh, praying for them or praying for someone that is sick or praying for all kinds of different things. Listen, if it takes a miracle to fulfill God's plan, that's nothing hard or difficult for him to do. Well, I've talked about Mary and Joseph. I've talked about the shepherds and the magi. There's one more person I need to talk about. And that's you. That's you. I've given you three different experiences of darkness and light. But where do you find yourself in the Christmas story? Are you lonely? Are you hurting? Discouraged? Disappointed? Tired? Worn out, ready to walk out of a relationship or just give up on life in general? Wait a minute. Wait. The light of Christmas is shining for you. We can imagine the star above the tree is Bethlehem's star proclaiming to you who are afraid, discouraged, hurting, mourning the loss of a loved one, facing severe illness. You've been to the doctor and the report isn't good and you wonder, will I ever have another Christmas? Jesus came into the world, the light, and became the light of the world. If you feel trapped in darkness, if it seems all hope is filtered away, you might be suffering from a broken heart, afraid of tomorrow, or whatever looms out in the future. But the light of Christ is for you. A light does a few significant things. We could put out the candles and put out the Christmas tree lights, and close the doors in the back, and we would be sitting in darkness. You would hardly be able to see your hand in front of your face, and you probably wouldn't, except for the parking lot lights that would come through the windows. Dark. And if I ask you to get something for me, you would say, but I can't, I can't see, and I don't know where it is. I need a light. God, in his infinite wisdom, looked down upon this world, one that he had created, upon a human race that he had created, and said, they are struggling in darkness. They're lost. There has to be something better. And thank God there was, and he sent his son, and he gave us light. Light that shines in the darkness. Light attracts, it draws us close to them. Why, some of you are old enough to remember a phone booth sitting on the street corner. The rest of you don't even have a clue what it was. Some of you have used the phone booth. Remember when you'd go in, and it was always on a busy intersection, it seemed. But when you went in, you would push the door shut. When you pushed the door shut, if it worked properly, and not all did, a light would come on. And now you could see. By closing the door, it took all of the noise and kept it on the outside. If you stayed in that little booth for a while, even on a cold night, the light would give warmth and it could almost warm you. 
light. It guides us. It attracts us. It keeps us warm. But the light that God gives to us. So, Isaiah said in chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. So, here we are on Christmas Eve. Tomorrow, we celebrate the birth of our Savior. But the good news about Christmas is you don't have to celebrate it just one day a year. And you don't have to receive, wait until a certain time to receive the light. God sent his only begotten Son into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. I don't know where you are in your spiritual journey. I'm just grateful and thankful that you have found and taken time to come and celebrate Christmas Eve with us. But if you do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, would you like to? And you're saying, yes, I, I would, but I don't know how. I'm going to pray a prayer. And as I pray, I will say some words about, dear God, thank you for speaking to my heart. I want a relationship with you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. When I say those words, you repeat, repeat them quietly and in the privacy of your own heart. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this very special time. I thank you, God, for sending your son who became the light of the world, but not only the light of the world, but can be the light of our life. Now, Father, for those who are here that maybe someone sitting out here that would say, I need a relationship with God. I want to have the right purpose and meaning when I celebrate Christmas this year. And so if you want to do that, say these words after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to my heart. I have sin in my life, and I am sorry for it. And the best I know how. And I don't know that I have a lot of faith, but I'm just going to trust that if I say I'm sorry and I ask you to come into my heart, that you will forgive me of my sins and come in. And Father, that is exactly what you said you would do. So for that man or woman, that young person, that child, that maybe said that prayer, they have just joined the family of God. For that we are thankful, for that we are grateful. And I pray that you would bless them, that this is the first step for them in their spiritual journey. And the next step is that they are going to be able to partake as we serve communion and we give thanks to the Savior for what he has done for us. And for these things we ask, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. I'm going to ask those who are going to be serving communion if you would go and get the trays, the plates, and when you do, if you would just come bring them up to the front. Some of you have been with us at other times when we have had communion, and I tested your hand-eye coordination and your spiritual tenacity by having you open a top of a communion cup that was really tough to open. So gentlemen, why don't you come up to the front? And what you're going to receive tonight doesn't have a top. So the best way is maybe take the plate, hand it to the person next to you, then take a piece of bread and a piece of juice, and then hold on to it until everyone has been served. You can serve. While you are receiving your communion cups and waiting for the ushers to get to you, this is a wonderful time just to think, give thanks, and rejoice in the goodness 
and the blessings of God. This little baby grew up, and 33 years later, he died on a cross. He died on that cross for everything that you and I have ever done wrong. He took the blame for every bad word, every bad deed, every evil thought, and he paid your sins in full through the sacrifice of his blood. The bread that you receive signifies the breaking of his body. The juice that you have signifies his blood that was shed for you. So tonight we not only celebrate the birth of our Savior, we celebrate what he did for us of dying on the cross. <clears throat> Three days later, he walked out of that tomb alive and victorious over death. Forty days after that, he ascended into heaven, and there he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me. <clears throat> the Bible says, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. A part of communion is remembering the promise Jesus made one day. I will come back and receive you into myself. ushers after everyone who's been served if you will be sure to get one for you and I would like to have a couple brought to the platform as well Thank you, everyone has been served. The bread is such a small piece, but yet it represents so much the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for us. Let's take the bread and eat it together. And the juice representing the blood of Jesus that was shed for you when he died on the cross of Calvary for your sins. Jesus said is often it doesn't matter how often you do this but when you do think of me remember me so as we take and drink of the juice together we do so in remembrance of him let's drink together heavenly father we pause to thank you for the gift of your son 
We thank you for the gift that your son gave to us when he gave his own life upon the cross of Calvary to free us from our sins. And the Bible tells us if we confess our sins, he will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you for that blessed promise and for what you have given to us. In your name we pray, amen. Now, if I could have some ushers, if you would take, if you're on this side, pass your cups to your left and pass yours to the, just, they're picking up the communion cups and if you see an usher near you, just pass them down the aisle and they will be by to pick it up. have those over here just pass them to your right and we'll send someone right down that aisle and I don't want you to be sitting there and uh, yeah here if you just come over and come up this aisle over on this side right there there you go and get them from this side over here As we begin to draw to a close of our time together, the light of Christmas. It's one of the greatest songs, I believe, of the Christmas season is Silent Night. When we think about the light of Christmas and the light of the world, do you know, if you know Jesus Christ, you are now that light. The light of Christmas, the light of Jesus, shines in your heart and in your life. Mary is going to sing the first verse of Silent Night. And then she's going to invite all of you to stand and sing the rest of the verses with her. And at that time, if you would take your candle, and an usher will light the candle of someone in your row, light the candle to the person standing next to you.
What an absolute beautiful picture. When Christ comes into a person's life, he makes a beautiful picture because he makes a beautiful life. And tonight, it's been so great to spend this time with you. And as we have a closing prayer, I'll ask you to then extinguish your candles and there'll be a basket, some, something to put them in as you leave. We certainly want to wish all of you the merriest of Christmas and we wish you nothing but the very, very best for 2016. And if you're here tonight and you do not have a regular place of worship and you're in our area, and I know many of you have traveled a long way to be with family and they said, what are we going to do tonight? They said, we're going to go to church. I'm glad you did. But thanks for coming along with them as their special guests. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time, for this night, for these people. May your blessings rest upon them. Keep us safe. Bless our country, our community, our homes, our families. And Father, we give you praise in your name. Amen. I started to say and didn't finish. If you don't have a regular church home and you're looking for a place, come and be with us Sunday morning at 1045. We're going to walk out with a great song. You can blow out your candles and sing with gusto. <laughs>